pay me to Ooh, baby, pay me to Baby, pay me to Hey, baby, just play me to Baby, pay me to Hey, baby, pay me to Welcome to another episode of the Ganas Network Podcast. Homero Guerrero here, and we have a whole room full of mother sucker. Just kidding, y'all. This is a coll- this is a big collab podcast. Today. Yeah, man, I'm excited. We have a special show, man. Like thinking about this for the last few weeks, Vincent, that we've been talking about it. Yeah. I was like, man, this is gonna be crazy because we have so many stories between this group that it's gonna go deep. But the cool thing is that like everybody has a different background. Of shit that we've been through in our lives, uh, through our family upbringings, and this is a special night for me, uh, Pablo. We all go back here. We all go back, yeah, way back. So let's introduce almost a decade, huh? Right? Yeah, almost so, a decade. so let's introduce the group here. Well, first uh, off, why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we just say we're here with a Bring the Fire crew? Bring the fire, and what you hear in the background is the hookahs, baby. Hookah. Yeah, we're not, we're, not, we're not hitting a fat water yeah. bomb. Like that. I mean, it is a water bomb. But it yeah. Is, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> technically, 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 it is a water bomb. Technically, it's a bomb. Only for tobacco. Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. Special tobacco? Wacky. Hey, did anybody invite Snoop Dogg? No? Okay. Yeah, he's, he's on his way. All right. All right. All right. Anyways, yeah, man, bring the fire in the house. So, you. the cool thing is that as we started, like, the Ghana's Network a couple months ago, man, it's so cool to see our friends that we know and have known through the years having success in their own business ventures, doing their own thing in totally different industries. And, oh, yeah, for sure. And the industry that Bring the Fire in, if you guys can't already tell, it has something to do with fire, it has something to do with bringing the heat, doing something unique. And it's a trip, man, to see people building a business around something that's fun. And, and something that they enjoy. It's profitable. Know? Oh, man. And let me tell you something. I mean, I, I think just here in Southern California, from what I've seen, these guys are the guys that are... I think they kind of created the industry of what they do, and they're kind of spearheading that industry. Now there's a bunch of copycats out there that are trying to do what these guys are doing. Obviously, you can't duplicate what these guys have done, but, you know, my respects goes out to... From I remember when they first posted the idea about it, and I was like, "Huh," <laughs> you know, because I didn't know exactly how it was gonna work. Right, right. But I've gotten a chance to hang out with these guys while they're doing their do, and let me tell you, man, it's very unique concept. It's something that is different, uh, and it's something that uh, you know is very profitable, like you said. So I'm excited to get into it with yeah. these guys, so they can kind of share, you know, what what it is that they do in their business. What it is that their, uh, you know, their backgrounds are, yeah. and where they, you know, how this they actually ended up bringing together, yeah. Table of like immigrant families. Oh, hey, for sure. Hey, hey. Bunch <laughs> of, <laughs> bunch legal, of. legal. They legal. all got papers. I'm a legal. Citizen now, I got my papers. Yeah, bunch <laughs> of immigrants. <laughs> so let's go around the table, man, and kind of get a quick just yeah. background. You know, uh, like for example, my name's Omero. Hey, hold on. All you guys know how to do a thirty-second commercial, right? Because we were all trained in how to do a 30-second commercial. Elevator pitch. <laughs> elevator pitch. <laughs> Vincent, give me your elevator pitch. So just background, man. Where you grew up, background, family background, and um, what you like about being... No, I'm just kidding. Just your background. Quick background. <laughs> Vincent Din, Bring the Fire. Uh, we also have a podcast called Smoke and Nice with Bring the Fire as well. And uh, I grew up in Orange County, Garden Grove. Um, background. Woo, woo. Uh, He's I the am, Vietnam. I am Vietnamese. My parents are from Vietnam. They immigrated here. Uh, in, the, in 75 and 81, uh, my dad 75, my mom 81, and uh, I'll pass it over to Gabe. Yeah, Gabe, also known as Hero. Um, man, my background, just working hard and trying to make a living, man, just grinding, you know. Um, but yeah, my, my family's, my, my dad's side of the family is from the Philippines, immigrated here uh, to America to get the American dream going on. My mom, she's straight from Mexico, immigrated here. Um, first generation immigrant and yeah man I mean we're just grinding man we're just trying to make that American dream all right my turn <clears throat> my name is Kareem um, aka Kimo uh, was born in Egypt actually you can't tell because my accent anymore. he's African but uh, yeah I'm African technically uh, but yeah born in Egypt uh, till I was six my parents came to the US of A for the American dream and 
dragged us along, and it's been awesome. So we've been here uh, since 1990, I believe. So been here quite a, quite, quite a long time. Hey, everybody. My name is John, um, a.k.a. JP. Yeah, um, I actually I go way back with a couple of you guys. I've known him for a while. And, um, yeah, I'm also my family's, you know, first generation. My mom came from Mexico and my dad. They came here around the 70s. You know, we're married here. I was born and raised in Orange County as well. I go actually way back with a couple of these guys um, to as far back as elementary, junior high. That's right. You know, yeah. and um, wow. it's been awesome. It's been awesome. That's a long yeah, time. It's, it's, it really is. It, it, I love seeing how you, we could drift apart, and here we are once again. Life brings us back together, you know, and everything we're doing right now, it's really amazing. I'm really excited. And, um, yeah, I'm just ready to get the show on the road and see what we got going on for BDF next. So Damn, that was good. That yeah, was really I good. I'll do mine over, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for you know, for all the bring the fire listeners, what is Ghana's network? Explain. Ghana's network. That's right. This is the collab podcast. So for the BDF, uh, Pablo and I got together and we realized that there was a lot of successful people uh, around us, successful friends that we do yeah. that had dope stories that were unique, and um, we thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had a show where people could. Highlight these stories to maybe inspire, uh, motivate other people to, to kind of follow or pursue their own dreams because everybody has a story. Uh, whether you're a teacher, whether, you, whether you, you're a janitor at an elementary school or you clean shoes in front of a barber shop, everybody has a story. But most importantly, in, in Southern California, it's a melting pot. And originally, the concept was like Latino stories for Latinos, but... It's, it's an immigrant story, man. It's not even about Latinos because Southern California, we got a super diverse group. We've sat down with a ton of different people. And this, I've never been in a room. With a more diverse With a more diverse <laughs> group. We're, we're hitting a lot of continents here. And it's pretty dope. You know, and we, we have like one common thread, I think, is that we're all like hungry and we want to make our family proud. Um, and we're finding different ways to do that because there's not one way to be successful, right? 10, 12 years ago, we were taught like, there was only one way. There's one. Put it all your eggs in that one basket. Yeah. You're going to be rich. Just but, follow the system. Follow these follow 10 the steps. Follow the system and do two a day. But, and uh, you're all going to be successful. And, you that's know, a it, broken system to me. It worked for a few people and good for them, right? But for me, it wasn't even about that money. It was the education that I got and the friendships, right, yeah. that you make. Yeah, absolutely. The friendship is huge. Because look at us. We're still like <laughs> friends here. 10 years later. Still, yeah. We're not even working together, some of us, and we're still in contact. But even if we're not working together, it's like we still support each other. Like, of Gabe, course. I don't profit from you at all, Gabriel. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't, but I'm, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. Yeah. Like, Kareem, your dad has this business that we've known about for a long time. Like, that's dope that he still has it, you know? Like, that's what's up. You know, John, doing your own thing and different things. You had a car detail business that had nothing to do with me, but I was like, dude, that's tight. Dude, do it, man. Make it happen. And here you guys are working together. How did, I mean, I, I'm curious, like, how did you guys get the concept? I know Kareem's the Egyptian, so he brought the hookah, maybe, concept, because... He you, always had the hookah at the parties. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I think that's how it started. Man. That's exactly actually, how it started. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think exactly. actually, I think you might have been there actually, Omero, over at um, it was uh, Jamie's, Jamie Sandoval's yeah. house. It was a birthday party. It was a right? birthday yeah. party. Yeah, I remember that. Birthday Vincent party. was there. John was there. Yeah, the party. Yeah, that party. Oh, okay. uh, that party. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was a very interesting party. Yeah. Very interesting yeah. party. Yeah, interesting party. And I don't know if you remember, but yeah, actually, all of us were there, right? Um, yeah. No, pa- pa- it's okay. Pablo wasn't there. You were there in spirit, brother. Yeah. No, I thought you were there. No, that's okay. I don't know what you guys but well, <laughs> all right, we we had we had a get together, right? And uh, I don't know, I, someone told me to bring the hookah, or I brought the hookah just because I'm the Arab guy. So, <laughs> um, so I brought the hookah, and me and Gabe were smoking and having a good time with Vince. J- J- JP was there, yep. right? Omero was. You were there. Yeah, I right? definitely was so there. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was a crazy night. Um, but, yeah, we just started smoking the hookah, and we just saw how everybody kept gravitating. I mean, even the older people there that they were at the party. They wanted to know what it was. Kiss, what is, what is. Es mota? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? all, yeah. Languages. all languages. All bro. languages. Yes. And um, everyone just had a great time around the hookah. Me and Gabe and John were kind of, you know, uh, looking at each other and Vince and we're like, man, this is cool. <laughs> we should cater, bro. Ha yeah. ha. We should take <laughs> ha, ha. To parties. Ha. Yeah. And that's how it all started. Yeah. Wow. yeah. We found out that, you know, like an idea is an idea, but fuck ideas, man. Execution. Yes. All day. Execute that shit. Ideas are just ideas. They're just on paper. If you need, you need to make that idea into execution. 
So how long, how long after the idea did you guys actually sit down and really say, you know what? Fuck it, let's do it. I would say it was about a year. Yeah, it took a while. It was about a year, actually. Gabe had left to China mm -hmm. at the time. So it was me, Vince, and John sitting here actually in my garage smoking hookah. Like, hey, should we open up a hookah bar? We're like, yeah, that sounds cool. Hey, Vince, how much money you got? Oh, uh, John? Uh, me? No. Oh, no. 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 That wasn't going to work. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a 50K. Yeah. That's credit. That's <laughs> credit. Uh, well, before Charge. I met Pablo, it was a horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah man we had gabe you know video chatting from china and you know i would say a good year year and a half yeah. till it actually came into fruition and we started actually like getting into buying some hookahs and getting into our first venue yeah it's been rolling ever since it's crazy yeah. it's, it's a crazy like experience man I, I never thought it would be this big no never never in my wildest dreams i thought it was gonna be this big i thought it was just gonna be like uh I honestly, I didn't believe it was going to be this big until I really started like, oh, my God, we're in that club. Oh, my God, we're in that club. Oh, my God. We're not even calling promoters. They're calling us. Damn, dude. So in that time frame, so it took about a year or so, you guys would chill here in the garage, smoking the hookah, talking about it. What kind of ideas were, you know, being brought to the table? Because, I mean, I can't. I mean, yeah, okay. I can, I can see, okay, like can cater maybe parties, but like what? Because now you guys are obviously. I'll let you guys get into it. But what exactly transpired in that year's time frame? Like, what, 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 what did you guys discuss as far as okay, this is how we should operate. These are the things we should like. What kind of ideas went into the whole thing? Because a year and a half is a, a good, you know, time frame for you yeah. guys to really plan something out. You were out in China, right? Yeah, I was in China teaching. Yeah, I you was know, doing the whole. Try education. to teach. <laughs> hey, you know. And I was running my buddy's school, and it was it was it was a fun experience over there. But I knew I, when I, ha I eventually had to come back. And when I come back, I need to do something. You know, so I'm glad. I'm totally glad Cremo called me up. He's like, you know the idea that we came up with? Let, let's do it. And I was like, let's do it. How much money do we need? So what did you guys discuss? Like, what did you guys discuss in that year and a half time frame to make an actual execution happen? Actually, um, I remember Kareem was telling us, you know what? I have uh, my brother-in-law well, at the time, you know, um, was married, but... He said, hey, um, I know he has a couple connects, you know, probably get a couple, you know, cheap hookahs, see where it goes, you know, buy a couple hookahs. Hey, they weren't cheap, bro. They oh, they weren't cheap. cheap. Good, quality hookahs. They're good quality hookahs. Good quality hookahs. They're inexpensive. Cheap cheap inexpensive hookahs. hookahs. There we go. Yeah, AM affordable. Hookahs. Affordable hookahs. And um, yeah, and we just said, well, let's see how many we could buy. Well, how much do we think we need? And I don't know how long the lines we came up with 200 bucks. Say, um, you have 200 bucks? So we each put in uh, 200 bucks. You know, and with that, we bought, I believe it was about eight hookahs. Yeah. We yeah. put together yeah. eight, hookahs. eight hookahs. We bought a couple cans of tobacco, bought some coals, just, you know, all the little things to get a hookah going. Yeah. And after that, it, it was funny that um, Kareem actually told me about this barbershop. I had just recently opened up in Garden Grove, and he was talking to the barber, and he was... You know, shooting the shit with the barber. Shout out to Ambitious Barbershop, Garden Girl, baby. Hey, hey. hey. Ambitious. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and um, he was talking to the barber and he told him, yeah, man, um, you know, we're, we're um, starting a, this company, this hookah catering company, and we're bringing this um, new concept to nightclubs. And that's what we want to do. And it pretty much didn't go anywhere. He just, you know, talked about it. And after that, he told me about the barbershop. And after, um, when I went to the barbershop, I remember I was getting my hair cut and... Um, this gentleman, you know, just overheard me talking to the barber. Yeah, you know, yeah, Kareem told me about you guys' uh, hookah catering business. Like, yeah, we're getting started. We're just, you know, talking to a couple people. We're trying to see if we can get into a venue right now. And um, this and gentleman just, you know, overheard. He's like, hey, um, I heard you were talking about um, you guys serve hookahs at, 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 uh, at nightclubs. I was like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what we're trying to do. He's like, oh, well, I know a promoter, a club owner that you might want to get in contact with. I got the number, maybe maybe a couple of days or a week or so. We decided, hey, why not give him a call? Give him a call, and he actually gave us a first shot to our actual first real VIP venue mm -hmm. where they actually allowed us to take the hookahs inside the VIP sections. I, I think... <laughs> that that was uh should I say his name right here? Yeah. What was his name? What was that, name? Well, actually, uh, his name was Chonchi. He's a really cool guy. I, I, I think... His real name is Adrian, I yeah. believe. It is, it is Adrian. <laughs> but everybody knows him, you know, big promoter. Uh, as a shout out to Chonchi's out, out there. Uh, super cool guy, man. I mean, we just clicked. We sat down at Starbucks, 
had some, I don't even know if we had coffee, but, you know, Matt, you guys yes. remember the Starbucks days, right? <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> doing a sit down, coffee. doing a sit down, right? And uh, he was real cool and said, you know what, yeah, I've been thinking about doing it, but I just don't have the time to buy the stuff and blah, 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 and, you know, and, uh, yeah, why don't you guys give it a try? And that was our very first venue, and that's uh, Shark Club, actually, in Costa Mesa. El Parra. Yeah. El Parra. Uh, the AKA, Club. Yeah, they call on Saturday nights, it was called El Parra. Back, back in the days, it used to be a limelight. It was all Asian back all in the Asian. days. Back in I remember days, those right. times. You think got to throw that in there? <laughs> I had to throw it in there because I had so many but fond that, memories. That full process, man. I mean, it, it took us so many failures to actually get to where we are now. Yeah. Like, we had to, like, really think about, hey, are we doing this right? You well, know? Well, like, well, talk, actually, talk, talk about our, our very, our very first, first event. I remember the very first I was, was still in China. I was still in Beijing. Gabe yeah, was still in China. Yeah. We... We were, uh, I think Kareem called a place that was called Executive Suites. Mm-hmm. Long Beach, Long shots Beach. out. How do you Long know Beach? about that? How do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Very interesting. Very place. interesting you know, place. Remember that? Very Cause, interesting cause location. I, I listened to it, I, you know, because we're doing a Udemy course. So I, I listened to that same lecture mm-hmm. like 20 times over. Uh, so I do remember uh, going to Executive Suites in Long Beach. It's and a rainbow, rainbow. It's, you know, it, shots out. It's a gay out. and lesbian uh, hey, club. That's mm-hmm. our, we love, and much love for that community. It was awesome. Yeah, yes. much love, much yeah. love to that community. Love. And we, we were there. We, we didn't know what we were doing. We had absolutely nothing. <laughs> like like uh, John said, we had six, seven, eight hookahs with us at the time. And we set it up. And we're like, dude, well, how much do we charge people? How, I mean, <laughs> yeah. do we charge $10 an hour, $25 an hour? Mm-hmm. What do we do? And you know, at the end of the night, we came up with $37. Woo-hoo! And we're, <laughs> we're like, like, we're rich. Like, <laughs> and we're like, dude, 37 bucks. We were sitting there. We're like, man, we have to keep doing it because I think successful people, anyone that, any type of business, if you're doing something like Gabe's, you have an idea, you have to put some work into it. And we just work. We went to original mics in Santa Ana. Mm-hmm. Didn't make a lot of money there until John went to the barbershop. But it was a process. It was venue after venue after venue of no success. We had no success. Made 50 bucks here, 20 here, 37 here, and it goes on and on, but we had no success. So how many time. how many people are on on the the BDF team? Like the uh, I, well, not the BDF, the executive board. I should say the owners or because uh, five. There's, there's five. 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 Yeah. So yeah. there's four owners and then one one salary. One okay. salary guy. Yeah. He's the uh, he's the VIP of operations. VIP of operations. Yeah. V, VP. Sorry. Not he's VIP. the behind the scenes <laughs> man. I mean, if it wasn't for like we were always taught like find somebody that's smarter for you and have them work for you. Man, this guy is smart. Who is this guy? What's his name? <laughs> Danny Galaris. Am I saying? Quayar. Yeah. Sorry. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Let's yeah. edit that. <laughs> Let's edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Danny. Danny Boy. Quillar. Thank you, Danny. We love you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you got to find somebody that's that's sharp because we didn't have. I mean, we had skills and networking and stuff like that, but he had the the back office skills and stuff like that, and he actually organized us all. You know, we were. He's a meticulous organizer. Super meticulous organizer, which I think like a lot of us don't have skills in, except for Vincent. He's pretty organized. Yeah, well, he's Asian. He's well, Asian. Yeah, he's Asian. Just because it doesn't Asian. count. <laughs> <laughs> we automatically assume he's good at math, too. <laughs> yeah. My wife doesn't agree, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thank you for it. But we found that guy that's smarter, that, 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 that's smarter than us, and he's, he saw the vision, and he was like, dude, we're like, you're, you're hired. We need you. But we can't pay you. <laughs> we can't pay, but we wow. can't pay you. We really, honestly, we could well, we, not pay him. But we sold the vision. <laughs> for free for a long time. <laughs> we, for free we for sold a long the vision, time. though. He saw the vision. You know, yeah. We paid him in Coronas and Tacos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 He drank a lot of Coronas and Tacos. <laughs> yeah, that's what he did. Dude. You know what? That's one of the coolest things about hearing the stories about how any business uh, is coming up is the stories of the failure, right? Because... You gotta you gotta fail your way to the top, and these are cool stories because I mean, this is a true idea. You guys all put in two hundred bucks, mm-hmm. and you guys failed, you know, trying to get into different air venues and different areas, uh, and then finally one person made a contact at a barbershop only because you were talking, you were talking at the right moment, and the right person heard overheard, and because of that person, he put you in contact with the one that gave you the shot at the at the club. Right. What was what were your emotions when you guys sat down with this um, club promoter who was like, "I'll give you guys a shot"? And then, what was your experience like at your first, you know, that first night at the club? That makes yeah. sense. Super excited. I know we all get the jitters, nervousness, but honestly, the excitement and the way we are 
our team, that's what I love about our team is that we get excited and we move. You know, that's what a lot of people lack is, again, I'll go back to what Gabe was saying is execution. We just, we got excited and we executed, you know, and that's what I believe led to our, you know, I wouldn't say overnight success, but it snowballed. After that, it was just one after another. And again, we, we took concepts into their fail. And we're doing things in the beginning that we learned six months down the line didn't work. So what, what do we have to do? We had to innovate. Think of what's next. What's better? What's a better product? What's coming up? So now we really had to dig deep into the market that we created mm-hmm. and really do research on what we're doing to see if anybody provided a product that could take us to that next level. And that's how we started, you know, slowly but surely getting more in depth into seeing what we had actually created and actually applied it to our new business. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 So we, but uh, we were scared. Yeah. Like I I was, (laughs) I mean, when we got, when, you know, uh, JP got the number and then we called him and, you know, I, I was like, yeah, he said yes, guys. He, he wants to meet us up. Oh, mm. crap. <laughs> <laughs> are, 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 are we yes? ready? <laughs> I got a yes. I got a yes. You know, and what did we do? It, it, it was cool, man. He said, you know, boom, I'll be there, yada, yada. And, you know, we all showed up to that Starbucks. And we, I think we were kind of talking in the beginning, right? Yeah. Like, hey, what are we going to tell him? We're, we're going to tell him. He busted out two cell phones. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That scares me. Like, man, this guy's yeah. balling. Yeah. <laughs> Came up, you know, in his cool truck. Got two cell you know? phones. <laughs> Escalade. Two cell phones, yeah. Pulled up and... Uh, but yeah, I think we were scared. Like, all right, what do we say? We don't want to say the wrong thing, you know? Uh, because uh, getting into executive suites, I would say that was easy. That was yeah. like, you know, I was just making some random dials, you know, on my phone and talk to the owner right off the bat. Like, hey, uh, I'm looking for the owner or the the general manager. Well, yeah, I'm the owner. How can I help you? Uh, I was like blown. Away. You know, I didn't know what to say. I just said, hey, uh, we do VIP hookah, and your club looks awesome from what I see, and uh, want to see if. Uh, you know, you'd like us there. Sure, can you come tonight? I was like, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know We're going to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> this works. Yes. This works. No, but actually at that time, I don't know if you guys remember, we didn't have any hookahs. Yeah. It well, was, that time we did. We, when yeah. he said, yeah, can you come tonight? I was like, oh, we're booked <laughs> tonight. <laughs> uh, but we can be there Friday. And I think we're all, you know, texting back and forth, got on a call with these guys. And uh, we're like, we got to buy some hookahs tomorrow. Yeah. We got to get, yep. you know, this Friday. And we that's when we scrambled, got the hookahs. And uh, just like Vince said, man, just kind of hopped in it, like did the work. Like yeah. we didn't know work. what was going to happen. We didn't know what to expect. We didn't know the type of crowd. And we certainly didn't know we were going to be running, you know, as many venues as we do now. And I'm not saying we hit the pinnacle of success whatsoever because we got a long fucking way to go. A long way. long way. And uh, I'm just excited to keep it growing, you know. But um, along the way, I know all the guys seen like other little – you know, uh, nobody copies, you know, someone that's not doing well. Yeah. So other people try to, you know, kind of do what we're doing. And it's flattering, though. It's like you're trying to copy us. That's pretty flattering. Yeah, like, Gabe thinks it's flattering. I'm like, I'll, fuck these guys. I thought it was <laughs> what's, what's great is that a lot of them fail, too. A lot of them fail. A lot of them fail. I even offered to sell them hookahs and stuff like that. Oh, you want to copy us? Hey, man, you want to buy some of my shit? Know, the funny, buy the some funny, good quality hookahs now. Yeah. The, funniest shit, the funniest shit is they try to sell the hookahs. Hey, you guys want to buy a hookah? We're like, yeah. uh, no. Yeah, that's, uh, that's $2 made in China. Uh, that's a 2009, bro. I'm rolling with the 2015. <laughs> yeah, outdated hookahs, bro. We got outdated hookahs. So, so in your guys' concept, you know, through trial and error, you know, you guys mentioned like, oh, there was nights you guys made like 30 bucks, 37 bucks. How did you guys determine uh, what the price point would be? For you know, and then and then when you guys were getting into you know with this club promoter, you know, was there something that you know, was there some kind of an arrangement that you had to make with this guy too? Like you need to break him off a piece, you know, like and then how did you guys determine you know in order for us to be profitable, we need to be charging X amount, you know, because obviously we don't want to talk about what you guys charge, yeah. mm-hmm. but what we do want to do is how did you guys determine at what point you guys were going to be profitable? That that's all trial and error, man. That's all like what would they pay? And that's like, if it, if we say a number and they say yes right off the bat, it's like, Take damn, it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. that's too cheap. Yeah. If they have to think about it and I have to sell it, boom, homie, I'm selling you. Like you're gonna be sold. Like I got a hook in front of my hand. That table wants to buy it for sixty or or whatever price it was, you know. And if you don't want it, I'm gonna go to that table. I'm mm-hmm. gonna go to that table. It was just like making numbers, making the rounds, asking everybody in the club until one person buys. Then when that when that person buys for whatever price. I know my price, man. I know my price point. At first, at first, um, 
I do want to say, though, we actually did start at $10 a person all night. I remember that. Yeah. Original and, Mike, Santa Ana, yeah. baby. And even at Shark Club. Even at Shark Club. But we Parra. still made like 50 bucks. And we still made like 50 <laughs> bucks. And again, we were just like, yeah, we're getting. I remember when we first hit. What did we make at um, at AVAC? Was it like our first $100? Something like that. Something man. like that. And we were like super excited. We were jacked for 100 bucks. And because we charged 10 bucks a person. So we had we actually convinced ten people to pay us ten dollars. Well, it wasn't yeah. like necessarily like any convincing, right? It was the cool yeah. like, because like no, I mean you didn't see that in OC. I don't know yeah. about different parts of the country, but you didn't see like oh, there's hookahs at the club. Nobody had hookahs, so they were like everyone's like holy shit, there's there's I think hookahs here. Tried. I but think it was they're kind of scared, right? Yeah, I think I think there's probably people that tried to do hookah at the club, but they didn't know they didn't they didn't know they didn't know why they were there. And they know they, they have to provide hookahs, but they didn't know the, the, the little things that will make them successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, that, that's a key point, though. They tried to do it. They tried it. They we, never, we did it. Yeah. We, we didn't quit. No, we I didn't quit. That's, that, that, we never no, quit. No, that's, the nice that we made no money at the beginning for a, six, for a year, we, we didn't even take a paycheck. No. Yeah. So for a year, we didn't take a paycheck, and we just kept on doing it. And we were just excited because, look. We're not gonna fail. I think that's our mentality. We're, we're gonna. We're not gonna quit. We're not gonna fail. And well, if, shit, I wanted my two hundred dollars back. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you guys saw a void in, in, in the market. You're yeah. like, there's a need for. There's a need for. We just need to kind of figure out the right price point so that we can pay our bills, make a little profit, and grow. And it took you guys about a year to get to those comfortable numbers where you you at least knew what you had to get to yeah. to scale it up. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even say we. I wouldn't even say like there's a need for it like in the beginning like because nobody knew what it was and so we just came with an idea and people liked that idea so then after that after it got into one club then the other club said there's a need for it so in the beginning there wasn't a need for it we created this market we're right, like we're right. bringing it here because yeah. we're, we're gonna sell it to you no matter what and if right. you don't buy it i don't care yeah yeah you know what's crazy i remember one time i went to el malecon because my buddy uh he was gonna perform that yeah. night and you happened to be there. Like, I knew you were going to be there because, like, you guys were yeah. there before. Yeah. And, like, when I saw, like, you pitching it and when I saw it at the tables, yeah. it made sense. Because at, at these scenes, like, uh, at these some of these bars, they're, um, like, corrido clubs. They have banda. And yeah. these guys love to pop bottles. These guys love yeah. to show off. And the smoking thing, it's, it's kind of cool. It's that cool, like, yeah. and it totally makes sense. And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, I can see that. Like, it's an ego thing, but because it, it's fun too, dude. It's a super ego thing, dude. You'll you'll get guys that have bottle service and they don't know what a hookah is, but it, because it looks flashy, they want it. They get the attention. They the eyes attention. are like, oh, those guys. The women come. Those guys are balling, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys must be narcos. <laughs> <laughs> That is crazy. Are you guys? But I mean, finding... like what you touched on, Omero, like you know the banda and corridos. You know, like I yeah. like my Spanish, right? There, yeah. Right? yeah. See, Egyptian guy. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, like we had to figure out also what clubs would be a hit. Yeah. The clubs that we made twenty, thirty, fifty bucks at. You know, not to knock down EDM. Love that. Love that. But um, you know, some of those events or nightclubs. Those people are there to party, man. They're there right. to dance, you know, dance and have a good time, and they're not really there to sit down at a VIP t- uh, table, right? Pop bottles, chilling, and smoke some smoking. Yeah. They're all on ecstasy. They're on some other <laughs> shit. Hey, hey. Maybe, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, 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 that's what they do. There. Well, it's almost like by, <laughs> so it's almost like a, a beautiful accident. Like you accidentally stumbled upon this uh, this scene. demographic, yeah. this scene. Yeah, because I had no idea the scene even existed. Yeah, to be yeah. honest, I, I had no idea. I'll, I'll My be in <laughs> my my beaner ass did. I was playing at those clubs. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only reason I knew because I ended up going to Omero show when you used oh, to be yeah. a singer for. Uh, I love going to Omero shows, dude. You guys oh, were my only fans. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I sold two CDs. Asian and I appreciate and a Filipino. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the two people that bought the CDs are in the room yeah, right the, now. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> the funniest thing, and I'm and I love you, Vincent, for it. We were roommates and stuff, but the funniest thing is that uh, at our CD release party. There's a, we had a, there was a photographer, a professional photographer there, right? And we were performing and stuff, and there's like all the chicks were in the front, right? Like, let's just call it 15 girls were in the front watching us perform. And Vincent's right there, like this, like, <laughs> like, and all the pictures, Vincent is in all the pictures in the front, like, showing me love and showing me support. And that's why I love this guy, man. And, and I, you know, I support everything that he's been doing. He supports me. And that's what this is all about, you know? It's like, We've been through so much through like our network marketing journey, you know. Um, yeah. Some of us had a lot more success than others. 
And some, John, you didn't do network marketing. Did you do network marketing? Oh, yeah. You didn't do network marketing. Thank God. And I was just playing out. No, we learned a lot. We learned a lot. But I think you were a student of the industry too because you read books, like the same books that we probably read. Yeah. And Kareem, Kareem shared a lot. Right? <laughs> he, he was your mentor, right? Yeah, he was my mentor. He, he, was, he was trying he was to get, recruit him. That's he, what he, was. he was pitching it to me. He's like, I can't I wait. to catch on because I wasn't that literate to that. <laughs> he was like, bro, I need my player club points. <laughs> I need to just sign up. Just the identity theft one. <laughs> right? but, so it's like, I'm thankful for that. You yeah. know, like, it's it's fun. It's fun to make fun of it. But well, without it, I wouldn't be here. Exactly. We, we wouldn't we, have known we, each other. We, we wouldn't. We known would each other. Have. That's yeah. true. No, we wouldn't it's, all be in this room right now. It's yeah. fucking cool. I wouldn't I mean, on you. 100. <laughs> and I yeah, wouldn't well, on yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. You know, but. that's three. Yeah. But it's a trip. It opened up a different world. For me, I didn't know about self help. I didn't read any books until I joined network marketing. Yeah. That's why my grades were terrible. <laughs> so, and I'm excited to see where you guys are progressing. You guys are definitely taking your business model. And I know you guys are working on a course to launch on Udemy. Yep. Through the Ghana's yeah. network, for the, almost from the very beginning, we've been pushing, we've been pushing Udemy uh, to, for you know, new ways to learn new skills, you know, to help you improve in your careers. Maybe a new way to make some money part-time, a new business, uh, a new hobby. Like I took some courses on photography and, and it helped me improve a bit. And it's like yeah. a $10 course. It took me like two days and it helped me learn some new techniques. And you guys are, you guys have a proven system that works. Yeah. Yes. And you could have been selfish and said, we're keeping it to ourselves. Fuck everybody else. We don't want competition. Um, there's more than like anybody can have like a recipe and try to implement it, but it takes more than just a recipe. It's your guys' personalities. It's your guys' work ethic. It's your guys' everything. The fact that you guys all kind of complement each other and you guys have strengths and weaknesses, but it's a team effort. I think it's a beautiful thing. And your course is going to be out soon. I think you said in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks, yeah. 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 Couple so, weeks. so stay posted when the, when the course is available. We're going to promote it through Ghana's network so you guys can learn about how you can make you know, killer, killer income through a hookah business. I mean, can you tell me, uh, can you kind of like touch it up a little bit more about your course and why you decided to do a Udemy course? I yeah. think, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Hiro, uh, VD. <laughs> <laughs> I think we wanted to do a Udemy course because look, there's so much success out there and a lot of people don't know that they can do something that, you know, a lot of people like to go clubbing, a lot of people like smoking hookahs and we combined it to and made it as successful. I mean, we average about $23,000 a month in sales. And we want to say, look, we want to show people how to do this from A to Z. All the one, two, threes, the ABC, so they can go out there. We can't, we can't do it in Austin, Texas. We can't do it in Florida. We can't do it in Las Vegas. We can't We're do it here. by ourselves. We can't do it ourselves. And we want everybody out there that wants to make money, that wants to be successful, that has a dream, that has a goal, to have a vehicle, we're just giving you this many vehicles out there, right? They don't don't stick to one, but we just want to give an oppor- give opportunities to people. Say, look, this is an opportunity where you can actually make money, have fun, meet people, and enjoy what you're doing. And you can do a part time or full time and still make a killer living, right? So, are you yeah. guys the way your course is structured, Gibbs? Are good job. So, is it like you guys are setting up like a franchise, like partner with us and? We can show you, not only are you going to learn through this course yeah. how to do it, yeah. but we can mentor you, partner with you. We can do conference calls and we'll walk you through it so that if you have any challenges, we're well, partners. Well, we do have that option. We That's have a cool. joint venture option. That's dope. Yeah. That's so, so if you want to go out there and you, you can do it yourself. You know, our, our course, we're going to show you from A to Z to do it yourself. And we want you to do it yourself. Uh, but it's always good to be have a team. And we've done everything. We failed already. We can tell you what to do at this, what time, and what not to do at what time. So it's always good uh, if you want to joint venture with us. We have that option at the end of the course where you can joint venture us and we'll mentor you and show you how we did it and how you had the success. Because you could have the success and it'll grow. It might take you two years, three years. But with us, I think it'll take you a lot shorter time. You know, it's, your, your learning curve is going gonna to be curved. I mean, we're gonna, we yeah. can pretty much walk you hand in hand. Yeah. And like Gabe was saying, it's like we made all the mistakes for you guys. We really did. I mean, we create again. We created a market where there was no market, yeah. you know. And um, for all you entrepreneurs out there that have done something like that, you know what it is. You know how it is to make all these mistakes. And again, it took us a year to really start, you know, flipping a profit, you right. know. And that's when we really started seeing like, okay, now we gotta continue to innovate. Boom! What's next? What's what's the better product? And yeah. that's what we have now. 
we have that available to you guys um, through our course. You go through our site. If you want to purchase from us, you can. We could give you great deals on that. You don't have to. But again, we can walk you hand in hand if you decide to do the joint venture with us. I think the most important thing why we decide to put our our baby and our methods online and show the world is we don't have that scarcity mentality. Like, I don't care if you're going to start. I don't care if you watch the course and you're down the street from me. I'm going to work my ass off and, and, and outdo you. Like watch the course and you want to start off a shop right next to me. I'm still we're still gonna work our ass off. We're still gonna outdo you, uh, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So we don't have that scarcity mentality. A lot of people are, are they want to share their they don't want to share their secrets. There's enough to go around. There's enough to right, go around. Right. There's three hundred next to each other. Why are all car dealerships next yeah. to each other? There's three hundred and forty million people in this country. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like exactly. you guys. It's it, creating competition. It's fr- see it as friendly competition. Yeah. It's like it pushes you. That's the way I see it. When I see a competitor out there, now it's like, okay, what are you doing? Okay, well, I'm going to have to top that. Yeah. It, it pushes us to get to the next level. Yeah, it makes so everybody we a, exactly. be better. It makes us be yeah. better. Well, you have to improve. You improve yeah. or you die. Yeah, exactly. Period. Yeah, and it's kind of like just, you know, when we have a new competitor, so yeah. to say, you know, we just, all right, well, let's see how long they last. Right. Yeah. And uh, You guys have the proven system that works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a and, lot of people, and you we get a, that back. You know, we get promoters calling... Man, oh my gosh, dude, this hookah sucks. Right. You know, or blah, blah, blah. They sucked. Know. Yeah, they su- it, customer service. So right. I like how you said we all kind of compliment each other. Although we have our times where we're all bump heads. You know, mm-hmm. I've always taught, you know, by my dad, don't get in business with your friends, you know. And it's tough getting into business with your friends. You know, sometimes you bump heads and it doesn't work out. People go separate ways. It is what it is. But I think what really helped us all is because we have four brains, you know, five with Danny, but, you know, really sitting there and like, you know, that didn't work. What can we do? And we all kind of helped each other go to the next level. That's why, and, and you know, in their Udemy course, or Udemy, right? I'm saying that right? Yep. Um, you know, every, anyone can do it by themselves, but let's say they did have our help. Let's say they did have someone, you know, they're not that good at marketing, you know, mm-hmm. and they got help with marketing. You know, someone that has no idea about, you know, Excel. Well, we got Vincent for that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the Asian guy. You know? But, you know, like, and uh, again, we all have different characteristics that I think help the business grow. So, to, to say, like, man, you know, sometimes I sit back or my dad would be like, well, why didn't you do that by yourself? Well, quite honestly, I don't think we would have had the success. All that, that fucking work by yourself? Yeah, dude. It, yeah. It wouldn't have been as successful. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You guys have an all-star team. And knowing the course is one thing, but le- uh, being able to teach someone how to apply the course step yeah. by step. You know, this is what you need. This is – it's fucking amazing. That's cool. I'm, it's going to be a hit, man. I can't wait. The cool thing about you guys' is, uh, model is that it's a worldwide thing. Yeah. Like yeah. every country has – the club scene, the bar scene, hookah is, hookah worldwide, is a man. worldwide deal, yeah. and and your model can reach millions of people, man. And a lot of people have the opportunity to start something, you know, that you guys created. That's the cool thing is you guys can literally start a trend, a worldwide trend. Hookah's been around for years. I mean, centuries. 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 Why do you look at me when you say that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Let's bring it to your family you tree. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Put it down a three the, <laughs> the reality is nobody's ever brought it to the scene the way you guys did. And that that right there to me is is, is, is amazing. That we're here sitting down with people who created an industry without you know anybody. And, and, and even when you guys... We're in doubt. You guys still kept pushing, kept pushing, and now you guys are the most successful, you know, uh, hookah company that caters in all areas in all of Southern California, and and everybody knows who you guys are. There's a lot of copycats out there, but they can't duplicate because of what you guys have been able to do. You know, you guys have set the trend. Um, I think they can't bring the fire, baby. Yeah, <laughs> they can't bring the fire. I think there's a saying. I don't know who who who. Mentioned the same bit. Jeff you Olson. Know, was it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, he, might try, uh, he might try and sue like, you, bro, for saying his name. You got to copy the right cat. You can be a copycat, but you got to copy the right cat. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And Jeff Olson. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people, they try to copy, but they don't got all the details. And then there's a lot of little details. A lot. A lot, a lot of little details that you need to do on a day-to-day basis to have success at what we do. And like, you know, we, we mentioned it a, couple, a few times where we made a lot of mistakes too. So we made the mistakes for you. And so when this course comes out in a few weeks, 
all you gotta do is just be a student, take copious notes. That's it. Be a student, take copious notes, and just listen and watch the videos over and over, and you'll have success. Um, and the only guarantee that we have is you have to work. And then you, you work, you have the success. But I mean, if you decide to half ass it, you, you're gonna fucking yeah. fail. It's like everything, man. Uh, everything uh. in life. Right, you try to bake a cake, leave out the, the sugar, let me know how that cake's going to taste. Oh. <laughs> and with your business model, you guys have the proven system now yeah. where you know every little fucking step that's required. Yeah. Where these partners, it could take them years because it's not about, oh, we did it in two years. No, 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 no. It's like you each put in two years. Do yeah. that math. It's yeah. actually Ten like years. It's 12 years yeah. of fucking. Years. Because you guys each did your own thing. And then the years of studying that you did like for business, entrepreneur, self-help. Add those years that put in that those people still may have no clue about. You yeah, know, it's that's true. It's crazy. It's more than that's true. That is cool. <laughs> and I, I just want to say, I think Pablo, you gave me one of the the best book advice. You, I think it was a, what, three weeks ago. You called me. Was it three weeks ago? Yeah, three weeks ago when we spoke. We were talking on the phone. He's a uh, dude. You gotta read this book. I, I say, you know, what are you doing? You know, we're just talk, talking, catching up. He's like, look, read the Miracle Morning. By Hal Elrod, yeah. and I've been talking about this book. books, talking this book to everybody. I mean, I every single morning now, you know, I wake up early. I get a lot of things done in the morning. Seriously, I get so many things done early in the morning before I start my day. I love it. That so even insane. now, even what you're saying is you have a successful business. Businesses, you're still reading. I'm still reading, of course. Why, bro? You made it, man. <laughs> you already made it to the top, baby. That's cool. That's what I think. Always a student, right? Yeah, always got to be a student. You always got to be continuous growth. And I, th- I That's think a nugget for all you people listening out there. And my, I think my attitude has changed in the last three or four weeks because I've been reading and applying his lot of concepts. You know, I did. He said, "Do an affirmation." All right, affirmation's done. Okay, great. Set your alarm early. Fuck, I hate waking up early. You know, I don't want to go to the gym. But you know what? Shit, I'm going to wake up early and go to the gym or do yoga. I do yoga because, you know, it's fun. Because you're, you're skinny. <laughs> you're skinny. And you, need, <laughs> you, you can flex all that ass. That's ass, form ass, of meditation. Ass, 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 ass. And, 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 <laughs> I think his wife is the benefit of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, it's, just a, a, it's just something that you just got to do. You, you see all these successful people telling you what they're doing. I think that's the most important. A lot of people tell you what they're doing to have success. Write down your goals, have affirmations, you know, wake up early, get things done. But not a lot of people say, "Oh, that's a great idea." You know, they'll take the note, they write, they write it down, but they don't. Like Gabe said, they don't execute. They don't fucking work. They don't go out there and do it. You know how many times I wrote down two a day, two a day, and I never did two a day. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that shit down. down I wrote that shit down every Thursday and every Saturday. I still, I, I, I every also Tuesday, started Thursday, a to-do Saturday, list. Right? Believe it or not, a to-do, a simple to-do list, just to be able to. I remember Vince told me a while ago, just write it down, bro. Just write down what you got to do today. I don't know if you guys remember, but yeah. I don't know if you remember Vince that Briefly. he told me, bro. How come you have no time? Why don't you write it down? Mm. You know, and we'll break down your time. Oh, I broke down my time. You know, and I have, I have a brand new baby. I have woohoo, kudos to that. Man. I have a total of four boys at home. Ooh, I have my wife, you know, and it's just like I got a, I got my hands full. So believe it or not, a simple to do list. Just to what are you gonna do from ten to four? You know, I gotta do this. I gotta go to I don't know the grocery store. I gotta pick up this. It, it really helps. It really helps. Why? Because it lays down your day, and that's how you actually. Because the thing that we cannot, you nobody can buy time. The, the clock is going to keep on ticking. But the way you utilize that time, that's what counts. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's having a – you, you kind of mentioned how Vince brought that up. It's like having an accountability or a workout partner. Like Omero and Pablo, you guys hitting the gym up at 5, five o'clock in the morning. God, man. That's, that's inspirational. That's, right. Right. that's insane, man. Props to you guys. Yeah, Props, man. Props it's still it's in so bed, cold. cuddled up. <laughs> it's, so, <laughs> it's so cold in the morning. You guys even sweat? Vince, we, we used to be roommates. You know 5 a.m. was like – yeah, that was me. No. It wasn't. And if you guys, for the guys that have been listening to the podcast, if you go like episode one to like now, Pablo for the first like fifteen episodes was like convincing me, like, "Hey man, we should really do this morning thing." And like, oh, I'm good. I'm like, I'm all right. You know? And, <laughs> and uh, how would you like to be great? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and making the decision. Well, first of all, getting the book and then reading why it's important. You know, let's give this a shot. New year, new me, right? So, and it's it's now how many days in a row that we've been going to the gym? Eight days. Eight days in a row. We're not taking any days off. Good Why? Stuff. 
Sunday, Sunday we had this mastermind after the gym. We're at like, like six thirty in the no seven thirty in the morning after the gym. We came out with some like brilliant ass ideas from seven thirty till about like ten. I haven't been up that early on a Sunday on purpose for a really, really, really long time. Why would we take a day off? Like money never sleeps, right? Money like money never sleeps. Yeah. Shit. But that's good. It goes into sh- to show like anything in life have some kind of accountability or workout partner. Yeah. You okay. know because us four here, you know, I keep leaving Danny out, but we always check each other. You know. Yeah. Like hey, uh, VD, you're fucking up, man. Hey, I need you to do this. Or Gabe, what's up, man? You said you were gonna do this. Uh, you Not know, and it's good to check each other in a good way because you know. It's it's tough to differentiate or keep separate friendship and business, you know, especially when you're in business with your friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. And mm-hmm. I, I think Omero, we had our con- the conversation yesterday. You were saying, man, I got so much shit done in the in the morning. From I think from like you say, from seven to ten, you get so much shit done. For the rest of the day, you're spending time with your wife, what your daughter. You um, to clean the house and make the yeah. <laughs> and she's loving and she's loving it, right? Yeah. She's loving it. I mean, it's, I'm waking up at five tomorrow, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna call you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> I'll be honest. I, I definitely would challenge all of you guys to read that book. Just read it. Yeah. You don't have to actually implement it, but read it, and then you know you'll slap yourself after if you don't implement. Mm-hmm. But uh, nonetheless, man, it was definitely fun sitting down with you guys and and chopping it up. Uh, the story behind, you know, how BDF came to life is legit. Like it's it's a true success story with everybody pitching in and and trying to figure this thing out. You know? I, I want to hear the story behind Ghana's Network, man. Yeah, it's how, uh, that, how that came to flu- how well, that come to fruition. You guys are launching a podcast here uh, soon, right? We have a podcast. We have two episodes out. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, you should invite us <laughs> <laughs> this, as your guest. <laughs> This and, is, is uh, it's interesting, man, to see what podcasting is doing for people. Yeah. Um, I started podcasting two years ago, and I've learned so many things in the last two years, man. And yeah. it's free. Why the fuck not? You know, any subject on anything, you could search it and learn from industry experts, you know. And we're just honestly, we're paying it forward, dude. And it's fun because as we're interviewing all these people, and, and you guys too, you hear different, different stories, you get massive nuggets. Mm-hmm. I get inspired every single week from different people in different industries. That I never thought I would get anything out of, and and it's it's and we're also helping promote their businesses because we want to see them succeed, and, and it's just like this 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 like ripple effect that I can tell that it's not that I'm doing it for selfish reasons because we're not making a penny off of this. Nope. You know, like all this equipment we're buying, it's just it's Dude. dope. But I can see how it's building a community, and who knows, man? We want to do like a scholarship, you know. Um, Eventually, that's one of the live goals. events. Have live events and have like public speakers, you know, and yeah. have courses. Have hookah catering there? That's of right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so 2016 is looking bright for you guys. BDF. Your course. What's next? After the course, you guys got to be planning ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we got a couple things in the works right now. We have some patents in the works right now. And it's coming out. It's going to be in full effect soon, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we got a couple things in the works, man. Well, I think you can share what's, what's on the patent. Go ahead. I mean, it's patent pending right now, but we're coming out with uh, the very first flavored hookah tip, which is a really cool candy hookah tip. It's uh, patent pending right now, so we're taking the hookah tips that normally people put in their hookah and you you know you smoke from, but now it's going to be candy coated, yeah. and uh, you know you get that experience taste. of uh, yeah. It's like so. a forty, like you smoke it, you smell it, you taste it's hitting all <laughs> areas. <laughs> Are you able to eat it? You are. Yeah. Oh, oh snap. It will be edible. Bam. That's an exclusive <laughs> on Ghana's network. <laughs> that is we're bumping up the obesity levels, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have we'll have a sugar free. We'll come back <laughs> for the diabetics. <laughs> How can people connect with you guys? I know you guys do a lot of social media stuff, constantly videos and what's up. How can you connect? I think the best thing is go to bringthefire.com. That's www. bring b r i n g. D A D is in Delta A is an Alpha Fire dot com, and you'll be able to go ahead and look up to our Facebook, YouTube channel, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram, the whole nine yards, um, and you're able to see everything that we do on there. You can connect to our podcast, Smoking Nights with Bring the Fire. Tight, tight. Uh, you'll be able to see all the clubs that we do because we're in a lot of venues across Orange County and LA. So if you ever want to go out, about those IE people and the Bobo. IE people. We didn't forget about you. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> we're always hiring. Oh, that's we're right. Extra cash. <laughs> we're always hiring. Absolutely. That's well, what's up. That's what's, so how has social media helped your business? 
people? Uh, well, I mean, social media, I mean, that's a whole ballpark that I can, I, I still have yet to learn. You know, there's so much more to still learn about social media, but um, I guess I'm kind of the social media guy. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram guy. Yeah. Instagram guy. You know, I'm, I'm really heavy on the Instagram and just promoting the nightclubs that we're at, just posting cool pictures of people smoking. We like to feature our customers and, you know, having a good time smoking hookah um, and, and partying. That's our, our thing, right? I party and smoke with Bring the Fire. And, um, you know, it, it I, I think it's really helped because people get to see who we are, what we do, having a good time. And it's not really just as, I mean, yeah, we promote what clubs we're going to be at, but it's more about the clients and looking at the hookahs and just, again, having an all-around good time. Right, you guys are showing, like, the culture of, yeah. of what you guys do. Because it's not just hookah. It, it really, it's an experience, you mm -hmm. know. And the way you guys present it, too, like, it's a unique, really unique. Uh, I remember you, when you guys had hookahs that were, like, lighting up. Like, I'd never yeah. seen that before at a club. That's, like, so unique. Well, I've always said, like, hookah, like, brings people together, you know, um, Sounds kind of cheesy, but it's true, right? At that party, you know, I was talking to, you know, Jamie Sandoval's dad's brother, you know, and I would have never probably had a conversation with that guy, but he was like, hey, what, what is this? You know, and he was smoking some hookah and we had a conversation. Why? Just because, you know, it's unique. People want to sit down, hang out, and it just sparks different conversations. That's why... Every Monday night, we're in here masterminding with yeah. Lucas. <laughs> tight, tight. I think I think that's a big nugget right there. If you do want to, you know, have an organization, that is your mastermind? Who's who's in your mastermind? It's huge. Group? Yeah. yeah. Who who can you collaborate with? Who whose ideas can you draw off of? And and if your ideas are good, you don't know. You, you think your ideas are good, but your colleague may think, hey, you know, it could be better this way. Right. Just little minor adjustments. Little minor adjustments, and then that. That's why we work together because we always check each other and always like, hey, it could work this way, but I think it'll work better that way. But let's try it your way and let's see if it, if it works, and then we'll, we'll adjust it. We'll adjust along the way. But look, all these minor adjustments, man, that that just that made us who we are today. And we're still growing. We're still adjusting every week. I mean, it's we have our core guys here every Monday for a mastermind. They were just here before you guys came, and you know, th there's still ideas that we learn from our guys in the field every day. Like we learn from them, like because. Yeah, we try to be in the field sometimes. <laughs> we're, we're in the field, uh, you know, not as much as before, uh, but there are eyes and ears out there, and, and, and we learn from them right? pretty much. And you know. I think so. you touched on Omero, like, you know, Vince, what, why are you still reading? Why are you still learning? Why are you still growing? You know, like, you made it, you know, and it's kind of like the mentality – that I like to have, I think all of us have, it's like, no, fuck that, we, we haven't made it. No, we haven't made it. You know, even no. when we're millionaires or whatever, you know, you, you put in your mind like you want to achieve, well, what's next? Yeah. You know, don't be, you know, you don't want to be bored sitting there like, all right, well, I made it. No, it's like for us, it's like, all right, cool, we got into the, these venues, what's next? What's the next venue we can get into? How can we increase our income? How can we help more people? Because at the end of the day, I never thought we'd be actually helping as yeah. many people as we are. Because it's cool that we got into it to make money, yes, but then we turned around and, like, everybody on our team is making money. And that's yeah. fucking awesome. The texts that we've gotten before. Dude, you like, know, people, crazy texts, right? thanking us, crying, like, thank you, bring the fire. Like, we got people that don't even have time for bring the fire anymore because they moved on, but they still want to try to be in our company somehow. Mm -hmm. They still want to be a part of our association. Like, like yeah, you, you've gone on to, to, to big things. You don't have to be at the club anymore. I, like, there's this one guy. He's making a lot of money for himself. He's really... Really humble man. He's really cool. Uh, he's doing his own thing now. He he's started us with us and bring the fire. Now he's moved on and he's got a really good job, really stable income. He doesn't need to come back to bring the fire, but he wants to. Like he wants right. to be a part of our he association. Asso yeah, he wants to be a part of our association. And that's what we built. We built like a culture, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. It's an yeah. attractive culture, and yeah. like, and if you discover something that's really great, I bet you they bring good people. They know good people. Yeah, and yep. that's how you build an army. Yeah. That's what's up. I'm curious because we all have like a lot of network marketing, self-help background. Real quick, favorite favorite self-help book and favorite quote. I'm just curious. Around the table. Kareem. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, how to win friends. Hey, and that's mine. Oh, dude. Oh, that's I got mine, you, bro. Hey, that was mine too. <laughs> that was mine, dude. <laughs> how to win friends and influence people, man. Love that book. I really think um, because of network marketing, hopping into that and – you know, as much as somebody may hate or love network marketing, mm -hmm. we've all learned so much from it, man. And yeah. I don't think I would have grown to be who I am today or what I still would like to be um, 
without network marketing because yeah. just I guess the influence and like you guys said the association just yeah. learning so favorite quote is uh, treat others how you want to be treated oh. I think mine uh, my first pick was you know how to influence influence people <laughs> my second pick is um, oh, man Arcad uh, dude, dude I forgot the name of the book I just had it too with my tongue uh, Richest Man in Babylon I, I, I love that book it's a short book it's a good read it's in story form uh, it teaches you about money uh, it's in story form, man. I, I love it. It keeps me engaged. Sometimes when I read textbooks and stuff like that, it keeps me, yeah, okay, I want to put this down. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of this. But it keeps me engaged because it's a story form. Um, I guess my, my favorite quote, um, man, uh, I, I learned this from a seminar I went to a couple weeks ago. Uh, just fucking work. Yeah, just fucking, fucking say that. Just fucking say that. <laughs> yeah. That was Gary V. <laughs> Gary V was on stage and he was like, everybody was asking him, hey, how'd you, how'd you get us successful? You know what I did? I fucking worked. Mm. That's all I did. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, it's my turn. Um, I mean, like Cream, how to win friends, influence people. Um, they can go rich by Napoleon Hill, uh, one of my favorite books. And uh, also, I got to add another book. Um, the Slight Edge, I think Jeff that book. Olson. Yep, Jeff Olson. That book that really. <laughs> 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 I think that book really helped me understand just doing little things every single day, in the act of doing it. Um, but I th- my favorite quote, um, uh, like Gabe says, fucking work. Um, but you know, on top of that, is uh, Jim Rohn, and it's um, shoot. Um, Work harder on yourself than you do in your business. Mm. Um, I haven't heard that in a minute. Jim Rohn. Nice. I'm gonna read yeah. ten pages tonight, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not much of a reader, but that's something that I have been, you know, picking up on. You know, s- small quotes and stuff. And um, but yeah, I read the the Slight Edge as well, and I I've had, you know, so, I'm not gonna lie. Vince Vidi, you you really you're the one that all the little quotes you 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 may not think that a lot of people listen or read. I read everything you put out there. That's all I read. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't I, I'm not I'm not a big book reader, but you know what? I do have some books. You know, I listen to like the Dave Ramsey effect. You know, and um he had he has I've listened to some of his uh, audio and um yeah man that's that's pretty much what what I've been growing on. You know I I have tons of quotes. You know, but. The one that really stuck out to me, not to jump on that bandwagon, but I am. It's like it's like work, you know. Um, I'm, all my life, you know, that's all I've that's all I've known. You know, my my dad, he was also always an entrepreneur, you know, and um, always just did for himself, you know. Also immigrant, but one thing that did sit out for me from him was he would work, he'd work his ass off. That's all he did, you know. So that's why I just get to work. Really, is it, it's big. It's very small, very short, very simple. But that's that's pretty much what we got to get to. You know, get to work. Uh, I got a question for for you guys, uh, for Ghana's network guys. Uh, w- like I hear all the time, uh, the immigrants in this country are like taking over. They're 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 creating businesses. Why do you think like the immigrants have the most drive? In my opinion, I think they have the most drive than than the native borns, people that have been here for for generations. Because when you're, when you come into this country and you have absolutely nothing, you have no choice. Yeah, yeah I mean, know? there's there's nothing to kind of go back to. Yeah. Um, you know, like in in my situation, it's it's a little like different. Uh-huh. My dad's family is actually pretty like well off in Mexico. They're not rich, but they have a nice Better house. Than most. Yeah, you know, they they never go without a meal, but it's dangerous. Are they narcos, bro? <laughs> <laughs> You they, don't have to say if they are. Nah. I'm sorry, man. I have to say I, that because after watching that Pablo Escobar, yeah, that's, everybody, that's every Mexican I meet, mean, are you a narco, bro? <laughs> no, and, and and like it's dangerous. You know, like there, you don't have the same opportunities that you we have here. As far as like just the education, mm-hmm. um, the different career paths that, you, that are available to you here, and the accessibility of technology, yeah. mm-hmm. and like if you want to get a loan in Mexico. If you don't have a lot of collateral, you're not going to get a loan. Mm. Period. Like they don't credit is FICO and all that shit doesn't matter don't in Mexico. Give a shit about that. And um, <laughs> for me, man, I think the reason people that get here, if they're immigrants, they know what's waiting for them back home. Mm. 
Mm. I have cousins that don't speak English and they're working in Virginia. They they got a legal pass, like a working permit to be here in the States. They do like three months here and then they go for two months back home, three months and two months, right? They're like in their early 20s, but for them it means so much, you know, and, and all them, they, he says like they, they just keep enough rent, to, enough money to pay their rent and eat and like everything goes back to Mexico. They're mm. funneling it all back and... And they're so happy, like they're so like. I see the, on Facebook; it's funny. Like they're so just like jacked for the opportunity, mm. and um, not that Americans that born here, like let's just let's just say white people that have been here a couple generations. Not to say because I know a lot of white people that are you know hungry too, but yeah. it's a different appreciation, man. When you know the story behind the story of what families have done to migrate here, yeah. and that's kind of why we started the Ganas Network. Just yeah. you know, for FY. Um, because there's a lot of people who immigrate into this country that, you know, we all know the people who write the books, the people who are maybe, you know, constantly on stage. We know those guys' stories because they're always talking about their stories. But there's tons and tons of, of, of people who immigrated into this country who have had some form of success. And those guys' stories can be just as inspiring. And I think by bringing it through a podcast, we can bring those stories to life. And with people listening, there might be someone who can get, be inspired by these people's stories. So, you know, that's the whole purpose of the Ganas Network is to share the stories like today. Yeah. You know, your guys' story is really cool. You guys came together with an idea from something that was born in a party. And it took a year and a half for it to, to you know, you guys watered the idea you know, and eventually that seed grew and 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 is grown into what it is today. But the story from the idea to where you're at now was what made this fun tonight. Mm. You know, hearing the trial and the errors and 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 the feelings and the emotions that went into the whole business. You know, that's what Ghana's network is about. That's what we want to be able to bring to the people. You know, the success stories like your guys's, but the story that happened in between. Most people don't get a chance right, to hear that, right? Because we don't all have the platform to write a book mm. and be put on the stage to talk about how we got to where we got to. No, we don't get those opportunities, as you know, because we're not labeled the quote unquote you know successful person on stage. That's the the one percent network marketer, the guy who who gets that platform. We don't have those platforms, but there's a lot of people like yourselves. I mean, you guys' this business is bringing in twenty three, twenty four k a month in cash. I mean, think about that. Why wouldn't I want to hear your story? Right. And how do you know there's right. not somebody out there who came? You know, at how old were you when you got here, Kareem? Uh, six years old. Who who's who was just recently brought here? A six year old kid. And some now this podcast is free, you know. He's twelve years old, and he's like, "Wow!" Listening to this podcast, and he's like, "Wow!" He came here at six, you know. I came here at six too. I've been here for six years. Why can't I do something with myself? Right. You know, it's it's that's what it's about. So that's what Ghana's network is about. Sweet. Cool people that have Ghana's, and, and it's like I know, like we all we all own our own businesses here, right? Yeah. Let me just pull. Let me try pull. Do you have a, a business degree? John? I most definitely do not. Okay. I don't have a business degree. I went to school for criminal justice. Not a business degree. Vincent? Um, I... No, I don't. <laughs> Gabe? Uh, I have a degree in the School of Hard Knocks. All right. Not in business. Uh, no, I dropped out of college. So that just goes to show everybody that it doesn't fucking matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you've already done. If you have a degree in anything, that's good. That's awesome. But it's about moving forward, working on yourself every single damn day to improve slightly, learn a new skill, master your craft, master yep. your craft, master your craft, and that's it. And make it happen. That's what's up. <laughs> and bring the fire. Yeah, thank you guys for, for <laughs> making the time, honestly, uh, to sit down with us and sharing your story. It was cool. Um, it, it was really fun. I learned. Yeah. I actually learned a lot. And I've known you guys for a long time. I know, like, I know yeah. you guys for a long time. And I learned like, a lot about your business. Like, oh, okay, go ahead. I didn't know that. Tight, interesting, you know, and I thought you guys were balling from the beginning. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> we wish. <laughs> hey, the pictures look dope. I was like, oh, they're, they're happy. Yeah. <laughs> For real. It's, cool. it's a happy business, man. It's a happy business. It's fun. But we wouldn't, we wouldn't have this without our team, man. Everything is on the shoulder of our team. Our team is, is awesome. The guys that work, that work with us, uh, 
at all the clubs uh, at all the clubs out there the strip the clubs that we can't go to yeah well, <laughs> all the strip clubs we can't go to because we're all we're all tied down everyone's married <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually yeah everybody at this table is married yeah, yeah. damn yeah. wow yeah you remember wow. when we were all single damn yes. uh no <laughs> Oh yeah, Chris, yeah, Chris, I, Chris, I, Chris, I, Chris, yeah, yeah. The most, so, majority of us were single, yes. Anyways, but yeah, man, it was uh, it was definitely cool hanging out with you guys tonight. You know, we have uh, a lot of years that we've known each other, and and tonight, mm-hmm. you know, we got to see it because we were so comfortable with each other, talking about you know, you guys' business and you guys' success, and I'm truly grateful that we got that opportunity to sit down with you guys, share the BDF story, bring the fire hookah business catering to all all places even strip joints right that's right, mm-hmm. that's right. Um, sam's so, house bro la, uh, yeah. LA. shout out shout out to know? sam's so, so, shout out to leilani <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> right. shout out to taboo gentlemen's club shout out oh, to taboo i, 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 I want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> and i want to go there. <laughs> so, so why don't we go you? why don't we do field this, trip man? why don't yeah <laughs> why don't we do this why don't we go around the table and have you guys you know share one last thought and uh and, and what you guys uh, want to share with anybody out there. Hey, guys, JP again. Yeah, man, um, just to everybody out there, you know, um, I know a lot of times we get we get caught in the mix, the everyday, you know, day-to-day life struggle, but just like what Meryl was saying, you know, I really like that, you know. It's like, you know, master your craft. You know, I never really seen it in that, and it, it brought a different light to it. You know, we all got our talents. Everybody has a talent or something that you could do that's unique that nobody else has. Yeah. And that's where you got to learn. That's where you got to apply. That's where you got to build your strength. And if there's a weakness, you make it a strength. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, you know. And um, I just hope that whatever you guys are doing out there, hopefully this was able to hit a light switch to where, you know what, I'm not going to sit down today. I'm going to stand up. You know, I'm going to run that extra mile and just, you know, keep pushing forward, you guys. I uh, just want to say thank you to Ghana's Network and Marilyn Pablo for, you know, just coming over here to the garage where it all happened. Um, and I think the most important thing is just work and just focus on what you want. If your why, if your dreams are bigger than your excuses, then you have to make it happen. You have to make it happen. If your goal is to have a lifestyle for your kids, or anything in that nature where you want to retire somebody or take care of someone you love and that's your purpose, you just got to make it happen for yourself. So I think that's my biggest thing this year is if my dreams and my why, the reason why I'm doing it, working my ass off, is bigger than my excuses, I'm not going to quit. That's right, man. Yeah, Vincent's a humble guy, man. I know he's working on other things for himself, uh, working on being a videographer, taking pictures. He's doing really good working hard He's driving crazy hours. He's not. He's never gonna talk about himself like that. But I'm gonna talk about it for him. He's just one of the hardest Asian guys. One of the hardest guys I know that works. He's like the editor and everything behind the scenes of Bring the Fire, and he does all this editing for other for other things. He doesn't even get paid for it. So I want shots out to Vincent, man. He's he's really a good inspiration. A really great great you, team member. That's right. Um, for me, man. Uh, you know. I'll just put this out there, man. 2016 is my year, man. I, I know it is. It has to be. I got two kids on the way. Shot. Just Damn. one straight shot. And boom. Two kids. You know, like a soldier. Like a, like a soldier. I'm a yeah. savage. Yeah. Yeah, I'm man. a savage, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I got two kids on the way, man. I, 2016, I got to work my ass off. I've been working my ass off these last three days filming something else for another Udemy course. I'm another Udemy instructor uh, for something else. You'll, you'll see that along the way. You know, I still have a nine to five. I still work and I'm working on other things uh, on the internet and stuff like that. But you'll, you'll, I'm definitely going to 2016. I have no excuse. I got to feed my kids. That's on the way. My wife's Asian. She likes a lot of money. I got to provide that. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> she comes from a lot of money. Damn. So I, no pressure, but I got to, I got to, I had to put that on there, so uh, it's going to be definitely a big year for me, and you, you can see me uh, on the internet, on Udemy, on Bring the Fire course, and another course that's coming out. Good stuff, man. Uh, this is Kimo. I guess the last words of the night are, do you see how hookah brings people together? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, uh, this was awesome. 
shout outs to God on Network. Thank you guys shout for coming outs. out. Huge shout out to you guys. Uh, you guys are doing some good stuff out there. I, I really, um, I listened to one of the, uh, I listened to, I think, a podcast a while back, but I listened to one today with uh, your cousin Oscar, which I've also known for a long time. Great podcast. Dude, that's awesome. Man. It was an awesome Historic podcast. Great. And I had no idea. Yeah. You know, um, and it kind of, I guess, opened up my eyes when, uh, or my mind more to the idea of podcasting or, you know, that, you know, when Vincent's like, Hey, we're starting to bring the fire podcast. I'm like, what are we going to talk about? You know? <laughs> uh, but it doesn't really matter, man. It's just, uh, getting in there and, and that four letter word, you know, work. And, um, I'm excited for, for this year, 2016, for all of us, just, I'd like to sit here next year and see what we've accomplished, you know, together, or, um, you know, side by side. And kind of, um, you know, just building each other up as a mastermind, you know, and helping yeah. each other stay accountable. So, uh, appreciate you guys coming out, and this was awesome uh, experience. Shouts out to Ghana's network, man, that, for bringing this all together. Ghana, we should definitely uh, meet up in about three or four months. This was fun. We should do it yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> or you guys can invite us to your podcast, and definitely, we can well, make an excuse the to club. come and smoke hookahs with y'all. <laughs> But uh, yeah, man. Anything else, Omero? You wanna? I'm ready. Honestly, man, I'm 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 speechless, dude. Because you guys are just sharing like so much knowledge that it's it's cool, man. I, I I know that everybody out there, even if you only got one nugget, one little thing that I was like, damn, that hit my heart strings. You know, like that's what I needed to hear. That's a slap I needed to be like, yeah, maybe I should try getting up in the morning. You know? <laughs> maybe I should write down my day. Yeah, maybe I should organize myself a little bit better. Damn, you know what? I haven't read a book in six months. Whatever it was, guys, make it happen. Lunes con ganas. Crush it. Make it a great week. We're going to be back next Monday. Uh, quick shout out to our sponsors, Metro Fund Financial, number one sponsor. We always lead with that one. But that's That helped us get the ball started, you know? Credit restoration. Fix your credit, guys. I think Help me. It helped me. Tell us your testimony, Gabriel. <laughs> well, I, I scared to Pablo one time, and I was like, I got this much in debt, and my credit score is horrible. How do I do it? And he did a quick credit check, and my credit score is pretty, pretty freaking good right now, dude. Really? <laughs> 700. Yeah, 700 nice. above the 700s. Yeah, so it works. It works. It's real. It's real. Not a scam. No. Metrofromfinancial.com. Hit them up. And for all of your uh, landscaping needs... Oh, you guys, it's been really rainy, so that means that grass and those roots and all that shit's growing. JNRlandscape.co. Hit us up. Make it a great week. Luna's going to get us crushing. Yeah, man. Peace yeah. out. Baby, pay me the hookah. Baby, just play me the hookah. Baby, pay me the hookah.